So I, I don't think there's necessarily more product in the European market today because I think there's still a lot of uncertainty about the long term position of, of what we're talking about here. So, so nobody's uh, changing strategies, is that what you're saying? They're, they're yeah, still well, waiting so, to so you've got to understand in the steel space, uh, there is a commodity product and there are a lot of specialist products. So commodity product can be run very quickly, but steel doesn't really travel very well as a product. It is a very heavy, uh, we are moving steel actually from our Australia oper operations to our South Wales operations, not New South Wales in Australia, but South Wales in, in the UK. Okay. And that is probably the longest uh, movement of steel that people do. Um, and that is because we have operations in both parts of the world. But actually a huge influx of material to the EU, not yet. Well, you and I have been talking about steel and tariffs all year. What's changed over the course of our conversations? And what's your biggest fear right now as we look to wrap up 2018? So um, fear and excitement. From our position, we've bought operations in the US and they are doing very well. So we reopened a facility in Georgetown in South Carolina. And apart from being rather hit by a, a hurricane, it's actually had a very good operational trajectory as we've restarted it. So it is a wire producer, which produces anything from coat hangers to nails. And that, as a, as a relatively protected business now in the US, has done phenomenally well. So from, from that perspective, we've had an exciting time. In terms of fit, I, I worry that uh, any tariffs will destabilize uh, the long-term uh, position in the US, increasing costs. If, if you've got a, a higher cost base um, as, a, as a producer, you pass that on to your consumers. That sets a new price level. And if the tariffs go away, you suddenly become very uncompetitive. Are we, are we set for a, a soft patch in commodities? And I asked that, some, something that the Treasury Secretary said to me about people taking action to get ahead of the tariffs. So what we may have seen is a lot of stockpiling going on in commodities as people fear that this trade war is going to worsen and the, 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 the tariffs are actually going to increase in size. And so they've been stockpiling ahead of this and then ultimately we get a little bit of a dip because prices decline as people recognize demand goes down. How, how do you see it? I don't, I don't think there is stockpiling. Stockpiling is a very expensive thing to do. <coughs> and Not there's been the Chinese it isn't. You know, well, they, the, the they've Chinese got more access it. to credit, but okay. uh, from, a, from a, a Western corporate point of view, it is a very expensive thing to do to be stockpiling commodities. And unless you're a trader and you're taking a physical position, which, which could be damaging, um, it's, it's something that you would definitely think twice about. Also, commodities tend to sort of go off after a bit. I mean, as a steel producer, if we're producing steel for the automotive space and you are producing a product, it goes from a steel slab into a rolled product. That has to go onto a car and be painted within a certain period. Otherwise, it's in trouble of, of degrading. I think that uh, when, when, when we look at um, just the stocks and how they have evolved in commodities, there's not really much evidence of, of stockpiling all, over the year. Um, commodities have been through the slump because uh, China has had a soft patch in the first half. But I do think that the commodities market now has a chance to see China in some sense regain after all the measures and in particular the access to credit is an important point uh, have been implemented. So um, I do think commodities remain uh, one of the asset classes that go along with a good cycle and if the economy is doing what, uh, what we are all looking at globally then it is an asset class that should, should benefit from it. So when Reuters says Shanghai steel rebar prices fall on worries of rising stockpiles, they, they're wrong. I think that within the commodity space, there's, as always, there's differences, but generally speaking, uh, we don't have an oversupplied market. I mean, if we look at, at energy, I, this is now picking up in terms of the inventories. I think it was fascinating. I remember during uh, one of the credit squeezes in China, walking around a, a yard in China and seeing iron ore with weeds growing on it. I mean, it had been there for a long time. You could almost see that the fact that the weeds had grown before the winter period. So by growth of the weeds, you could work out that that iron ore had been there for about six months. That was a strong evidence of a stockpile. But actually, I think today, due to a lack of credit, due to a, a position where people don't want to be with a stockpile in a period of such volatility, where you've got a Trump leading on a tariff, you've got China uh, policies changing. Nobody wants to be that long. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.